Welcome Dash fam, Best Dasher Alive here, aka Daddy Dasher, back with some more tips. First one I've got here is regarding your bag placement at the door. So where you're actually setting the order when you're dropping it off at the person's door and or gate, which way does the door and or gate and or screen door swing? If you're entering the house and you have to pull it towards you to then get to the next door, then that means you don't want to put the food right in front of that door. And then also if they have like a little table or something close to the door that you can set the food on, I usually like to set the food there. If they have something that's a few steps away from the door, I almost always still just go drop it right by the doorstep because I think most people literally just wanna open their door, bend down and grab it, and they don't wanna open their door and have to take a few steps. The only exception to that is going to be if they provide instructions in the app for exactly where they want you to put the order or something like that. And then also some of you might disagree with me on this one and that's fine, but I really believe that you should not knock or ring unless they specify for it. The app is going to update them. Most people, almost everybody's gonna be paying attention to their app because they're hungry. They wanna know when their food's getting here. And I know for a fact that people do get annoyed when the dasher rings or knocks and they did not specify. So I always take the approach of unless they ask me to knock or ring, they're just getting the drop off and I'm taking the picture and they're not hearing a peep from me. When you're waiting at a restaurant, make sure and use the tell us what's happening option. If there's actually a legitimate one to use, like if you haven't been able to get help from any of the employees there, use that one. If your order is still being prepared, use that one. If the food wasn't started until you got there, use that one. And the reason for that is because I think it's good to let DoorDash know your situation, but also that sends a notification to the customer. Don't be timid when you walk into a store. Don't be like rude and too forward about things, but like if there's not like a pickup station that you can walk straight to if you have to go talk to an employee, go to the front of the line, go straight to the employee. Uh, don't If they're already speaking with someone, don't butt right into the conversation, but also honestly don't feel like you have to wait till the very, very end of that entire transaction to say something to the employee because oftentimes you can just sneak in a little like, hey, it's a DoorDash for Jim. And they'll be like, okay, one second. And while the customer's putting in their credit card, they'll go grab it and hand it to you. Hi, it's a DoorDash for Michael. Thank you. Always be listening, especially when you're picking up an order because stacks can ring in. And if you don't hear it or don't see it, then you completely missed an opportunity to grab a stack and quickly increase your earnings. I like to keep my phone pretty loud so I can hear the dings in case a stack ever comes in while I'm already on an order. If I ever get stuck waiting at a restaurant for an order, another thing I like to do is pull up where I'm headed, actually just manually go punch in the address into, I like to use Apple Maps, and then look at the route, see where I'm going. Just so when I grab the order, I've already got that kind of in my head, I know where I'm going. DoorDash asks to use your very precise GPS location, and it does, and it not only tracks that when you're door dashing, but all of the time. And I've noticed that like, cause I've dipped in, non, not on a dash, just doing my own stuff. I dip into an area where I don't usually go. And then I do a dash later that night or something. And it takes me to that area or it has me go pick up food in that area. And what I've learned is that DoorDash just tracks you and it pays attention. And oftentimes will assign you or give you drop offs where it's seen your location at. And so if you want certain areas to pick up food in certain areas or drop off areas, whatever, like, Maybe it's worth just going, swinging through that area occasionally. I also think that the algorithm gives you more of what you accept. So if all you're accepting and doing is small orders and you're not declining small orders and waiting for bigger ones, and then once a bigger one comes in, making sure and grabbing it, then DoorDash is just gonna, you, you, you're taking the small ones, so we'll keep giving you the small ones. Maybe there are some situations where it's worth looking into, maybe I want to move to this area because then I can sit from home and fill DoorDash orders. Maybe it's also worth looking into, and I know this is the case oftentimes, very oftentimes around concentrated areas of restaurants, there are also small offices for lease, $500, $800. If you're making a good chunk each month from DoorDash and you can increase those earnings by getting an office or you can just increase your comfort drastically instead of having to sit in your car and now you've got an office and then also that office can be a business deduction this is especially helpful in a car on an e-bike you just have you just can maneuver so much more easily that doesn't really matter but i always like to set up my vehicle for the easiest exit if you can just pull through a parking space 
so you don't have to reverse you can just drive out of the parking space you know that's going to save you some time and some wear and tear on your car and then also i like to do the same thing when i'm dropping off at someone's home i just think one thing that's like kind of courteous a nice little touch is park a little bit down like just out of the sight of the front door so if you do need to sit in your car for a second on your phone or whatever you can and you're kind of out of their business for a second there and also that's good for if you kind of have to like organize the food or get it ready before you go hand to them i also think it's smart if you haven't door dashed if you like haven't ordered food through DoorDash, do that and see what it looks like on the customer side of things that'll just help you understand a little bit better and then maybe help you be a little bit more efficient as you're doing deliveries. You can also look at the customer side of DoorDash, use that app to look at what are the most popular restaurants. And that's just gonna be the ones with the most reviews and the highest stars of reviews. That's where most orders are probably gonna be coming from. And so maybe that's a place where you wanna post up or show DoorDash your GPS location there. I also like to listen to directions instead of looking at them. You've already gotta look at your phone a lot and it does you know, add a little bit of danger while you're driving and everything. So I try and look at my phone as little as possible. And one way I've found, especially on an e-bike that's helpful for that is I just use AirPods and then I play Siri through my AirPods and that's how I listen to directions. Also a couple tips for when you drop off the order and you're taking a picture. So if there ever was an issue or anything, like DoorDash is super good about, they just refund people and move on. But if there ever was an issue or anything like that and you need to refer back to the image, like it's not gonna be super helpful just to see a bag sitting on the ground. But if you step back a little bit and you get the person's address in the shot and you get some other scenery as well, then it's very obviously, especially with the number in the shot, that, okay, I did drop it off at their place. And then I also think a good thing to do is when you take that picture, grab a quick screenshot of it. If something happened and you need to show the picture again or whatever, and you don't have it, then you gotta go all the way back. So I just think a screenshot real quickly after you take the picture could potentially save you some headache. Whenever you're having a problem and you need to get in touch with an agent, uh, you can go help and chat with an agent, right? Okay, well, when you get to the chat with an agent screen, just type agent in. It's going to try and get you to like click through some uh, default options and all that. Like literally just type the word agent, click send, and that, then that will bring you a live agent that you can start to chat with. I'll be breaking this down in later videos, giving you like a bag tour and everything like that. But uh, if you're using an insulated bag, and I think you should be whether or not you're in a car or a bike, but inside your insulated bag, you can just put cup holders, which are super handy and convenient. And since it's inside an insulated bag, it'll keep your drinks hot or cold, whichever way they come. And then if you have like hot drinks and cold drinks or cold drinks and hot food, you can just simply place a divider between the two and that'll keep this side cooler and this side hotter. I don't know if this is exactly the same for everybody, but I think it's a weekly deposit for everybody. I think which day it is may be different. For me, it's Mondays, I get weekly deposits from DoorDash on Mondays, halfway through the week. So on Thursday, I like to go in there and do a 199 instant transfer to myself. And the reason that I like to do that is because just in case if something happens from Thursday until the next Monday, from at least the first half of the week, I got that money. If it's a shop order and I'm like really on edge and I really wanna see what the items are, especially cause I'm on a bike. So if I wanna see the items, cause it doesn't let you just in the offer, sometimes I'll just accept it. I'll look at the items and if they're items that I can't carry, I'll just unassign the order. I know a recommendation I've thrown out and other people throw out too is aim for like $2 a mile or better, which is definitely the right advice. But also I'll throw in right here that sometimes if it's like a $20, $25 offer, even if it comes in like a little bit less than $2 a mile, sometimes they'll still make sense because you can knock, you can make that say 24 bucks, right? You can make that 24 in one delivery where you might have to spend three deliveries to grab that same 24 even though those three deliveries come in at you know, $2 a mile or better, maybe that takes you longer and it's just more effort than just a nice chill one trip. I hear a lot of people try and avoid apartment complexes and especially if you're on a bike, man, I think just become a G at apartment complexes. But with that said, I do like houses better than apartment complexes because I've noticed that uh, oftentimes houses have a better chance of the total coming in higher. I've taken a couple weeks off and come back and be like, oh, I'm not really getting the same kinds of like really good orders. I'm not getting all the bangers I used to get. And so my tip here and what I did and what is helpful, just knock out a bunch of orders so that DoorDash sees you're legit. Just complete like 50 to 100 as quickly as possible, show DoorDash you're, you're legit, and then it'll be willing to send you bigger, better ones. Don't worry about getting paused. One of my biggest pieces of advice is to use your decline options. And if you do that several times in a row, then DoorDash is going to automatically pause your dash. Just don't worry about it. All I do when that happens is I just click resume dash and I keep doing the exact same thing. I don't know if this is the same in every area, but at least in my area, I've seen that 
uh, one, if you schedule a dash 15 minutes before it actually starts, you're able to click dash now. I think it's worth knowing your city better than Apple Maps or Google Maps knows your city. And what I mean by that is I've just noticed that sometimes I can pick better routes than Apple Maps picks. It might be worth just grabbing like a cheap little junker that you can just straight door dash in and let it get beat up. Also, I've done this a couple times. You can rent a car and door dash in a car. Like if you just grab a car for a day or a week or whatever off Turo, you can get some for like 30, 40 bucks a day or whatever. And if you can make 150, 200 bucks a day, you can do that in a rented car that you don't have to do insurance and maintenance and any of that stuff. And it can also be an electric car so you don't even have to pay gas prices. And honestly, like if I didn't have any other options in the area I'm in and the amount of money I know I can make and I've looked at how much rentals cost around here, I could absolutely be profitable just renting cars every day and door dashing that way. It's an option. And I did mention using e-bike, that's how I do almost everything. But I will say in the actual app, I have my car in there. Um, I just, when I first, I signed up a long time before I ever actually even door dashed for the first time and I'd put my car in there, didn't even really know about e-bike life. So I've just had my car in there. I imagine if you were to put a bicycle in there, yeah, maybe you get different offers and that sort of thing. Um, so maybe a pro tip here is to, if you're going to e-bike, maybe don't put it in the app, maybe just have a car there. Coffee cups don't have like the little plug in them. And so some liquid will splash up. So I carry a little bit of tape with me so I can just tape those holes shut so nothing spills out. And if in case anything does spill out, I just keep a little cloth on me to be able to clean stuff up quickly. I also like to keep my phone unlocked the entire time. I don't like to deal with locking it and unlocking it, typing in codes and like I just leave the thing open the whole time lit up. If you're not getting orders or something just seems a little off in the app or whatever, close the app, turn off your phone, restart everything. When I'm doing shopping, sometimes it can take a second to find the product that you're looking for. One thing I do that helps me speed it up a little bit is I click on the picture that it gives you of the item. I blow it up as much as I can. And like the color of the packaging and the style of the packaging is more what I look for instead of so much like the actual wording. I, I just think that makes it a little easier to scan things and find what you're looking for instead of having to like try and read every little name on every little thing. Oh, and if you're on an e-bike like me, in Apple Maps, I like to go in and click avoid highways. That makes it really nice for Apple Maps just picking routes for you that are much more suited for bicycles. And then this one's kind of a cool little trick I figured out. So if you want to dash but it's not busy in your zone, but the zone next to you is busy and you can dash along the way. I've selected to go dash there, do like a dash along the way, but I, then I just stayed sitting in my zone and it gave me orders in my zone. So picking another order for dash along the way doesn't necessarily mean you have to head that direction. You might be able to just turn that on as a dash along the way and sit right where you're at and get orders right where you're at. Are you doing TikTok? Uh, I need to start posting these on TikTok. Because I see videos like people do like DoorDash. And yeah, like, uh, yeah. I have a YouTube that I post some stuff on, but yeah. I need to put it on TikTok. I just haven't done it yet. Do you know how to edit? I'll pay you to do it.